Hey, thanks for checking our channel. Here's going to be maybe a repair video on this particular unit. This is a uh, old Gallagher M400. This is the brown case version, a tan case. This is an early version. They did make a black case version in like the late 90s, uh, early 2000s ver variation. Um, but this model came out in the early 90s. This is a uh, pre-1999 model. Uh, based on the serial number uh, format that they used to use, that they I think 98, 99, they went to a their current style of um, serial number format where they date code the first few numbers as a, a kind of a month or year, month, day kind of thing, or month or is it year, week, day? I think how they do their serial number formats. But this is a old style, it's just, just a sequential number i guess they made you know 500 that week or whatever they made so each one would just be off by a number but there's no date code uh in there they probably had a database that they used to reference maybe off of back in the day i don't know how they used to do it on the how they knew how old it was there's maybe a stick on the inside or a, something but um ooh, that was holding in yeah, a little the little usually the push the tab and but the tab's still there but it slid right off the little holster that would lock it in was right there and it broke and i think it broke for a while honestly but um here's the inside it's not the old style oh i think this thing's all original yeah there's some information right here which has a serial number right there which is the same as on the unit so this is a this is a factory transformer from back in 1995 or 1993 or whenever this unit was built it gives you a bunch of information though it's a uh, under at a 500 ohm load, full width, that means full pulse width. It was a two joule output. The interval, how often it pulsed, was 1.1 seconds roughly. And the actual time is actually on the fence, like the, the little click, the little shock duration itself was 0 0.321 milliseconds. So the, the shock itself doesn't last that long. And the thing pulsed every 1.1 seconds. But um, this has the old style. I love these old units. These things are really good. But this is uh, definitely an earlier style. And the reason I know that is because how this board, well, to, just to look at the board for one, because I've worked on so many of these over the number of years that this is a very, this is probably the original style because it has this wire right here. A plug ties into the neutral side of the AC. It ran up and plugged in right there. It was used as a spark gap. Later on, they got rid of this, and that wire went away, and they had a little um, brass V-notch looking thing. Let's see if I got a board in there that has it. Um, let's see a circuit board. But later on, AC models had a, a little brass V-notch looking um, metal plate that went along here, and instead went all the way around and tied in back over here. And I got rid of this, and basically what their idea was with this variation, as well as the other one, was lightning would could possibly come in on the fence side, and they got this internal spark gap right here, like a lightning diverter. It, this is your fence side, this is your ground side. Their idea was, it came on the fence, but it just jumped that little gap, and then since this wire plugs in right there, it's so dang close to to that it's not physically tied to it's so close that lightning would hopefully jump from the fence to the ground from the ground if it didn't go all the way through the ground rod and dissipate itself there and hit this and go to the neutral side of the ac which i don't know how electricity really works on the ac on the, on the electric side of things on the you know your um how it's wired up in a house or whatever but supposedly the uh, the neutral side is like a grounded hot. That's how I was explain it. Explain. I don't know. I'm not an electrician by any means. Um, more of a technician than an electrician. And uh, but that's um, that's why it's tied into the neutral side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a few tests on the board. And the notes doesn't say what's wrong with it. What it's doing is just name, address, phone number, email. Stuff like that. But we're going to test the capacitor first since this is probably the original because it's got the cream beige colored white one in there. That's what they used um, back in the day. And probably, I think in the early 2000s, they went and had a grayish one. And then later on, they had, they had a blue one. Um, just a different manufacturer, but the same type, type of capacitor. But this is a 30, or a, sorry, a 20 microfarad capacitor. And it's reading 7.6. 
Oops. Come on. I had it for a second. There. 7.6 microfarad. It's supposed to be 20. So that's way too low. That might be all that's wrong, honestly. These boards are so old school in the electronics. Um, they don't go bad all that often. And we got to put a new light bulb on there, which I don't know if I got any of these neon bulbs or not. The look, it's a, not a, it's probably been burned up for a while. So it's not a crucial thing that that bulb flashed. It's just a power light, dummy light. Hey, tell you the thing's turned on. But this light's more crucial because it tells you how is your fence okay light. This tells you every time it clicks and flashes, it's as long as it's flashing, hooked up to the fence, you know, you've got about 3,000, 4,000 volts, uh, coming out of the unit. And on the fence, but this light goes out, it's clicking and flashing, either it's burned out or there's a bad short in the fence. So that's, that light's more crucial than that one. So if I don't have any bulbs to put in there, I'm not going to worry about it. It's not a end all, be all, needs, needs that part in there to, to make it run. You can actually remove that bulb and, um, get rid of it and then it will still, um, work. So the capacitor we're going to put in here is a little bit different than this one. Different shape, it's square. But the similar rating, 20 microfarad, like 900 volt or something like that capacitor. It's a little wider, so we've got to snip this thing out of there. This capacitor is going to rest just long enough that it kind of bumps into that and it won't sit in there just right. Let me go get the capacitor, and I need some other things too. And then we'll start the process of putting that in there, wiring it back up to this, and we'll just plug it in and see what happens. All right, here's the capacitor we're going to stick in there. So it's going to set right about there. And I usually put a little, after I get installed, I usually run a bead of, um, not hot glue, but like a caulking type of glue. I usually like this stuff because it comes with toothpaste too, lasts a long time, and it cures and turns into like a rock. And I put a bead along there, and by the time I get done with this unit, call the customer, set it to the side, get it ready to ship that day, or the, usually the following day I'll ship things depending on what time of the day it is, what we got going on, that this stuff will cure and it locks that thing so it doesn't flop around inside here. It won't flop around too much because once the board sits back down, it doesn't, uh, has no, no real room to move. So what we have to do though, the reason I use this one because Gallagher starting to get slimmer on certain parts that they're offering for units and plus those pressures are kind of expensive for what they are because Gallagher, you know, this stuff's not cheap. So I think with Gallagher's name on it, you know, part-wise, Energizer-wise, they're always kind of on the higher side of price. But they've always been an expensive brand. I mean, this thing was probably $225 back in its day, $250, $225. But look, it's lasted 30 years. With, with, And hopefully, we'll see if it's just a bad capacitor or a weak capacitor, this unit would be a nice, easy fix. What we have to do is solder wires on. There's no um, polarity to these capacitors. So it doesn't matter which side goes where, but we do want to make sure these wires are long enough. Because I'm going to crimp on some male spades to the other end of these wires, and that's what's going to plug into the board. Because this capacitor has those little angled... has spades on there and those brass things press on there and I poke up into the board but we're not going to use those here of miscellaneous things. I keep all my male spade connectors in here. These are crimp on type. You can also solder them, but it's just quicker and easier to crimp them on. So set about right there. I'm trying to think 
I think these wires are going to be plenty long enough. They're not going to be overly long. We need to trim off some. So I think I'm just going to strip them back the way that they are lengthwise. And we get, get a good crimping tool out. Okay, let's get this board installed. So take this wire, it goes in that little notch right there. And this little piece of plastic right there goes in that notch too. And you get the board, goes up underneath all these little tabs, and little points there on the housing. And as we, before we set it all the way down, we're going to go ahead and plug the wires in. To the board. I'll probably squeeze down on those just to make sure that they're a nice tight fit. Plug that wire. This isn't required to make it run but we're going to plug it back in because if it goes to work and then we're going to we'll test it and then we'll we'll call it done. Okay let's uh, we'll squeeze on this. Smaller needle nose, I can't find them. But let's see if these will work. Yeah, these will fit. So get a little squeeze on there. All right, let's see what happens. Plug it in, turn the power strip on. There it goes. Lights flashing, so that light's burned out. Ah, you can kind of see it glowing green. It's burned out, but you can kind of see it glowing green there. 30 some year old unit, all need was a capacitor changed in it. That's something. All right, let's put our. Uh, let's see, we use my analog, use this analog tester I've got here. And let's put it across there. Should be about 7,000, between 6 and 7 on average. Oh, we're hitting almost 8. But this meter isn't also isn't all the way, going all the way down to 0. So probably between 6 and 7, which is where these things normally set at. And I think on the side of the case... I think it says peak output voltage was with no low was 7.2. We already know it was eight. So imagine if we subtract that thousand volts out of there, we'd be about seven, six and a half to seven. And with a 500 ohm low, it says about 4.7 at two joules output. Um, so yeah, this unit's done. So let's take that glue stuff. Pressure to sit right there. We're just going to run a bead. Clean the case and the capacitor. Once that stuff cures like a rock, it ain't going nowhere. This a tube like this, like seventeen bucks, sixteen bucks, whatever it is at Walmart. By the paint and glue and epoxy area, and it lasts a long time.
Okay, so we're going to put a screw in the case there because this thing doesn't want to stay doesn't want to stay together. See, it should lock and it's not. So let's get a uh, back in the day, Gallagher put a tamper proof screw in the front there, which I might have some. It's not like no reason why, because it's uh, a UL listed unit, I believe. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not back in the day that wasn't. But we're gonna put a um, some kind of screw in the front here. Don't put too big of one. I want to put something in there where the the case of clothes. Or the case will keep from coming off. There, like that. Now it's not going to come apart. Yeah, it's just a felt screw. So, if it needs to be taken apart by me or somebody else, it needs to be easy to get apart and not have to have special tamper proof torques that Gallagher put on them later on. All right, well, this one's done. We'll, get a, we'll write them up, get the customer a call, and I'm sure they'll fix it. Pretty cheap fix for a $200 unit these days, 225 something like that for what new ones go for. Come on, focus, you piece of... There we go. All right, until next time, see you guys later on.